step inside into the world of Lady Till's Curios. wildflowers of the Kaibab National Forest dance in the wind. The aroma of the big brush sage fills the air. Small moments like this are sometimes glossed over in the storytelling process, but it's moments like these that help set the tone and hold fast in my memory. We've been traveling nomadically for a year now, just me, my husband, and our two dogs. We started our journey with Nova and Trek, and now Odin has come into our lives like a bat out of hell. While I researched and planned for today's episode, I sat outside and watched the dogs roam around the forest. These types of moments allow my mind to dwell in the creative process. They give me pause and allow my imagination to run free. Often when I am exploring, I come across moments like these and struggle to describe the emotions I am feeling with words. There's something peaceful and poetic about these brief snapshots of life. I sometimes feel as if time itself slows down just to allow me to experience the beauty and the mundane. This brief, beautiful moment passes, and I am able to continue on the adventure. So we're going to the Grand Canyon today, and we've been camping outside the Grand Canyon in this beautiful national forest. And we're going to check out some curious places today. Some places that have unique history, unique trivia, and maybe even some paranormal activity. We've got the dogs in the car and we're ready to hit the road. Our first stop is off of Fire Road 2607, located in Tucson, the town that is right before the entrance to the south rim of the Grand Canyon. We're visiting the Tucson Lookout Tree. Lookout trees were one of the earliest forms of fire detection in the Kaibab National Forest. Because the forest was so expansive, literally covering both sides of the Grand Canyon, the Forest Service did not have the budget to build lookout towers, so they used the tall ponderosa pines that were already standing. They would construct ladders against the trees and saw off the top of the tree, then build a platform around the tree. Each lookout tree had a telephone, a map, and a compass, and typically two staff members kept a lookout. There were dozens of these lookout trees, and as the years went on, the Civilian Conservation Corps was able to start building more steel towers starting around the 1930s. By the end of the 1940s, the lookout trees were phased out. Of the dozens of lookouts that were in the forest, only 11 have been found, and these were added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1992. The remaining lookouts have been lost to time. Just stopped at the lookout tree and walking back to the car because it's super windy and freezing cold and I'm in short sleeves. So we're going to go put on some warmer clothes and head to our next stop. Our next stop is within the Grand Canyon's South Rim. We paused to check out some of the canyon views. We've been here a few times now and the size of the canyon still blows my mind every time I see it. It's beautiful, it's mesmerizing, there really are no photos, videos, or words to give it justice. You just have to come see it yourself. 
So we have arrived at the Shrine of the Ages. The idea of an interfaith chapel at the Grand Canyon started as early as 1917, but wasn't actually constructed until 1970. Harold E. Wagoner was contracted as the architecture, and the original goal was to have the shrine located next to the rim, but that proved to be a little too ambitious, so the shrine was moved next to the local Pioneer Cemetery. In 1975, the National Park took over the building and it is now used as an educational building in addition to an interfaith chapel. We weren't able to go inside as it is only open on certain occasions, but we were able to explore the cemetery. Walking into the cemetery, you are greeted by an entrance of stone and timber, a nod to the natural elements that make up this national forest. The gravestones vary in size and material. And the cemetery is home to around 400 people, and to be buried in the cemetery, you had to have worked at least three years with significant contributions at the park, or be a relative of somebody who worked at the park. There are many different people from different backgrounds, different races, who had different careers, and some worked in the park and some lived in the park, and people who were photographers, explorers, and authors like Ellsworth Kolb, people who were rangers of the park or gave significant contributions like Pat and Ron Brown. You will even find some of the Harvey girls buried here. There are natives and our tribal relatives that are buried here, and even pioneers, the first people to come to the Grand Canyon, such as Miss Ada here, who was the first white woman to raise a family on the rim of the Grand Canyon. And Wallace was a pioneer, a guide, a miner, and a poet. The many different people who are buried here just give tribute to all the people who came together to make the Grand Canyon what it is today. You will even find a memorial for the infamous mid-air collision that occurred over the Grand Canyon on June 30th of 1956. There was a collision between the United Airlines flight and a Trans World Airlines flight and all 128 on board both flights perished, making it the first commercial airline incident to exceed over 100 fatalities. This collision actually took place in uncontrolled airspace, and it is one of the main reasons that the Federal Aviation Agency, otherwise known as the FAA, was created. There are some out there theories on why the crash happened, and based on everything I've read, it seems pretty straightforward that just the pilots did not see each other or saw each other at the last minute, and because it was uncontrolled airspace, there just wasn't a whole lot of protocol. They literally tried to avoid each other and then were not able to. That's what I think what happened. However, some of these theories involve UFOs, some involve supernatural events. There is this one TV show on the Travel Channel called Mysteries at the National Parks, and uh, I've heard theories that the Grand Canyon has a portal to the underworld, and this episode was actually called Portal to the Underworld, and they alluded that the crash was a supernatural event. So that's something interesting to consider. And so we say farewell to those who lie in the Pioneer Cemetery of the Grand Canyon. Our next destination has some of the most majestic views of the South Rim. When you're walking along the trail, you can see the top tower poking into the sky from a distance. This is the El Tovar Hotel. There are many rumors surrounding this hotel and we're going to get into those in just a moment here. You may have actually seen the hotel in National Lampoon's vacation. So when you walk along this trail and um, 
take the right right in front of the hotel and go in front of the parking lot, you will find a unique piece of history here. And it's kind of sad that there's a dumpster right in front of it, but right here across from the hotel and to my right sits the Hopi house, you will find a single solitary grave literally buried in the parking lot here. And this is where a lot of the rumors stem from. This is the grave of Pearl A. Ward. She was born 1879 and died in 1934. And many say she still roams the grounds of the El Tovar and keeps watch over the south rim of the Grand Canyon to this day. When you go inside the El Tovar, there's a lot of dark, woody aspects. Um, you'll actually see some taxidermy from Theodore Roosevelt and many other famous people stayed here like Herbert Hoover, George W. Bush, Dwight Eisenhower, and so on. There's definitely this old hunting lodge kind of vibe going on and even though I wasn't able to check out any of the hotel rooms during our visit here I was able to go in the gift shop and there's this book called The Ghosts of the Grand Canyon which it it's funny, I did a search on Facebook and found some other people were also interested in this book and had some similar experiences in this book. So Cody writes, I've experienced some entities on the rim trail while doing astrophotography. In fact, I found this book after the experience and the first chapter confirms what I experienced. This is a great book pertaining specifically to the South Rim. Another person replied, I've worked here for two years at three different locations and things in this book happened to me while on the job. Didn't read it until after. There's energy here for sure. Cindy says, I had a filing cabinet almost fall on me on my first day working at GCC. I said, I mean no harm. I'm here to help. After that, I only heard strange sounds or saw things out of the corner of my eyes. Kathleen says, I visited the South Rim this past October. I definitely felt an overwhelming amount of spirit vibes. It was exhausting. I was tired afterwards. The feelings did not go away until I was back on the main road, leaving the area. And then another couple shared their experience. Adam says, my wife and I have had some interesting experiences spending the night in the private residence in the Verg Camps building on the South Rim. Someone asked them to elaborate, and Adam said it was mostly furniture moving overnight. It happened several nights in a row. That is just crazy. And there was one more experience from Allie, who wrote, A colleague once spent the night alone in the El Tovar Hotel in the 1980s. It was unoccupied for a deep cleaning, renovation, something like that. Anyway, he heard a few things go bump in the night and said he'd never do anything like that again. So there's all these people that have had these very strange experiences and there's even books about them. So there might be something going on here that we just don't understand yet. I actually shared a sneak peek on my Instagram stories about this episode and one of my friends, Luz, replied with this picture. And she said that at first the picture creeped her out a little bit, but it also made her feel kind of hopeful, which I thought was interesting. So if you zoom in on the picture, and for those listening at home, this is a picture of the South Rim with Starry Night and there's some sort of shadowy figure within the light reflection and yes it could totally be just the reflection of the light bouncing off the camera but if you look closely it kind of looks like a woman in a dress walking along the rim could it be pearl keeping her watchful eye over her beloved home that's it for tonight curious minds i want to thank you all for joining me on this episode of Wanderings, a Grand Canyon adventure. And until next time, stay curious.